Howdy folks. WebDriver IO provides us with an execute command. What this command does is allow us to execute client-side JavaScript while running our tests. This is pretty powerful where this allows us to modify the actual web page while we're doing our tests. So as you know, the all the tests for WebDriver IO run in Node. So that's that's JavaScript on the server. Whereas what the execute function does is allow us to actually run client-side JavaScript. And the reason you might do this, there could be a number of reasons, but maybe you need to remove elements or change elements. Um, it kind of depends. You, you, you don't want to use it to modify the web page because then that a lot, because then that's going to defeat the purpose of your test. So use it as needed. So let's dive into that now. So I've created a new file, browser execute. So what we can do, first thing we'll do, we'll open up the page, some web page, and we can do browser.execute. Then the first parameter is the script we're going to run. Most of the time, you're just going to provide it a function like that. The second, it, it also accepts multiple other parameters. We will get into those in just a sec, but let's try this now. So anything inside of this right here, anything inside of this, this function here is executed on the client. So we don't have access to browser right here. If we try to do browser.url here, it wouldn't work. It's undefined. The inside of here has no, no idea what the outside world is at all. It's hard, might be harder to wrap your, hand, wrap your head around that at the moment, but that, that's essentially what it does. So everything in here is client side. So if we try to do dollar sign something, it's not gonna work. Well, it might work if you have jQuery installed, but this right here is not WebDriver at all. So let's just see what this can do. So let's execute some client side code. So let's we'll open up the URL to this, which is here. So let's let's change the color of this text. Let's inspect it in the class of heading. So what we can do, so we have to use client side JavaScript now. So what we can do is document.query selector. And the selector things are kind of the same, as long as it's valid CSS selector are the same as selecting the regular web driver elements. Adding. So just document query selector is just client side JavaScript. So we can change the text color of this by doing um, that style, that color. Let's do it blue. So let's, let's throw some pauses in here so we can see what's going on. Three seconds. All right, so if we watch, this should change the color of that text here to blue. So let's see if it does that. It should wait three seconds. Boom, it changed it to blue. You see that? So this, we were able, inside of this dot execute method, we were able to change the color of the text, which is kind of cool. So maybe we wanted to root, remove that element altogether. This might be a use case where you would actually, a good use case for using the execute to, to remove an element. Sometimes it might be like a, a footer that's like Z indexed a little bit above the main page that's just, will get in the way and it's not really needed for tests, so sometimes people will remove that. Uh, but let's just remove this, this welcome to the internet text. Boom, there it is, it's removed. Cool, so we got that removed. So let's do some more things. Let's, let's, um, let's pass in parameters to the execute method. So like I said, this has, the ins when you're inside of the execute, you have no recollection of what is on the outside of this method. 
So to do that, we can pass in some data if we need to get some, some data from the outside. So let's do const foo is equal to Willie B. So we have that. So what we want to do is we want to set, um, let's set the text. We want to set the text of the um, welcome to the internet to Willie B here. But how would we do that? So using client side, we can do text content and then equal. But how do we get access to this? So what we have to do is pass foo as a second parameter to browser.execute. So we can do foo. And then the next thing we have to do is we have to, so what this does is foo, the value of foo gets passed into the first parameter here. So this could be like our text or something. So our, the, the data here from foo gets passed to here and then we can take the, our text and use it here. It's a little confusing. A lot of times I will just name this, like if this is foo, I will name this foo. I'm naming it differently just kind of so you can see how it's a little bit differently. But now this should change the text to Willy. And let's see if that works. It did. See, it's Willy B now. If you had more parameters, you could have like Bob. And then this would be other, other name. So you'd have that to access that. So if you need to access data from your main test inside of browser.execute, you can pass it in here. That works. Um, so let's remove these. So browser.execute will also return a value, it, or it can return a value. It just depends on if you, you need to or not. So let's just return, what do we got going on here? All right, so let's just return some text. Turn foobar. So we can return data from inside of this, which then, we can assign it to a variable. So now we should be able to console.log output. So the output should log foobar. And let's see if it does that. Our text is not defined. Oh, we just left that over. Does that, and here we go. If you look down here, foobar. So it did return that. If you're on version four, this is slightly changed in version five. Um, you would need to do output dot value to get the value. If I could spell output dot value, and then it, re it returns it like that. But in version five, you don't have to do that anymore. So it's just a nice clean value. Right. So that is how the execute method works.